Welcome back everybody. So this week we are making a side, it's a potato dish and they are called the pomme de terre sauté Landaise. It is a sauté potatoes from the southwest of France and we're going to be learning two things on here. First one, how to sauté potatoes starting raw, so there's no pre-cooking. And second, we're going to be using or learn how to use that very special pan here. This is a rounded sauté pan made of carbon steel and its sole purpose in life of that pan is to brown, sear and saute things. This hot pan is making a big comeback into professional kitchen and I wanted to take it for a drive, see how it performs and how useful it can be in a home kitchen. So let's go. Now these saute potatoes fall into the category of the so-called duck fat saute potatoes, but they are slightly different than the usual one because there's just more ingredients. This is the southwest version of France where you have the duck fat, you've got the potatoes, you need to use waxy potatoes, which are the potatoes used for salads, and then you're going to have some onions, some raw ham, usually it's the jambon de Bayonne from the town of Bayonne in the southwest of France, this is Serrano ham, and some mushroom, if it's in season, you can use the sep known as the porcini mushroom. At the end, it's going to be the same. And the usual suspect, you're going to have the chopped parsley, the pressed garlic to toss in at the end. Okay, but as you can see, there's just more ingredients in there. And the most important for that technique, which is called the pomme de terre sauté à cru, so we're going to be sauteing them raw, is to take them out of the water and really dry them absolutely properly. You don't want the potatoes to be wet at all. They have to be totally dry before we're going to start to toss them in the pan. Okay, now let's go in the stove. So what's the deal with this rounded saute pan, especially the steel one, where most of the time uh, everybody use, you know, frying pans. And the steel frying pan was, you know, kind of famous for searing steak and stuff. And nowadays, what well, the chef I think have realized is that having the steel pan with that shape you know, like a saucepan, you got the same heat transfer as the frying pan, so it's super hot at the bottom and on the side, it's got an amazing searing power. And you can throw your ingredients in here and move things around as much as you want, nothing escapes the pan. No splatters, you can put a lid and that can take a beating. It works on any stove, electric, induction, gas goes into the oven, goes under the grill. Only drawback with these pans, they are prone to rusting. So anytime you finish using them, you can just rinse them with water, but you really need to dry them properly and even add a thin coating of oil with some paper towel. Otherwise, you have speckle of rust appearing because this is made of steel. Let's go. So we've got the pan. I'm going to use a high heat. I can use a bigger burner. And I'm going to add on here to start with, and this is my advice, a good one or two tablespoon of duck fat in there and let it melt. Now this may seem like a lot of fat, but one of the things that you need to do, especially at the beginning with these steel pans, exactly like a wok, is that when you got all this, this fat in here, you're gonna be swirling to make sure all of the side of the pan are coated with oil. And then I'm gonna remove half of that and put it back later. Perfect, it's very hot. I've got my potatoes dry and they're going in. So you see what I was saying about the frying pan compared to this one. If you have a frying pan, you get your potatoes. As soon as you're going to do this, one is going to fly off. Okay, and this is so annoying. What I like about this is that you got the frying, but if you want, you can do this, you can turn. And this is the action of sauteing. These pans are all about doing things and moving things by hand. So you don't use a spoon and that allows you to use fragile ingredients, sometimes glazed carrots, small turnips, or spring vegetables, and instead of breaking them with a fork or a spoon every time you're trying to catch them, you do this. You move things around, you swirl. You see that shape? It helps that kind of turning. I mean, listen to that sizzle already. You see the power of the seal? Bit of, bit of salt? Of course. Give that a toss. And we're gonna spend a good 10 minutes browning these potatoes. So after 10 to 12 minutes on a high heat, we start to have some coloring on the potato. This is what I mean, just by shaking from time to time. So within the 10 minutes, all the time, you toss things around and stuff like that. Second stage, we've got the coloring that we want. We're gonna start to flavor. So we've got the raw ham, this is the serrano ham, and we're gonna add the onion. And same thing here, you can use a spoon if you want, if you're using uh, that pan or a similar pan. And the whole idea, so it's the same. Sauteed, we keep on swirling and mixing. One or two minutes later, this is optional. 
Uh, but I'm going to add this to the oyster mushroom. I can cut them in small pieces. But I'm going to put them in here with a little bit, a little bit of uh, black pepper. Now, one thing uh, we need to know about potatoes in general is that when you bake them, cook them in the oven, or saute potatoes, doesn't matter if you pre or part boil them and then doing a saute, they will take on average 30 to 40 minutes to be fully cooked. So the trick here, when you make these sauté potatoes and you start with raw potatoes, you know these are going to take almost 40 minutes. You start with the first 15 minutes getting the coloring, starting to cook the ingredients. I'm going to toss things around and then we're going to lower the heat. Okay, when we've got everything mixed up, cover it and let this cook very slowly for the rest of the time. For the last cooking part, you're going to be spending 20 minutes Tossing from time to time and make sure the heat is not too high and not too low. If you're on medium low and you see your onion starts to brown too much, you reduce your heat. If it's the contrary, like nothing starts browning, you raise your heat slightly. For the lid, you can put it all on. What I like to do is partly cover. Timer on 20 minutes. Let's go. Now that you've got a bit of time, you're going to take your garlic clove. You press it, a bit of olive oil, and the parsley, we're going to be plucking the leaves, okay? And always wait to the last minute and when you're almost done, it is always the same and the same thing. We're going to be just doing that cross chop, gathering the thing, and it's going to be a rough kind of, a rough chop. We don't go microscopic pieces. You want to have a nice and rustic type of cut. Yeah? That's about it. All right, 20 minutes is passed. I've tossed things around and look at these colors. To know if it's cooked, you take a small knife and you're gonna be planting this in the potato. Look at this, how soft that is. It melts through. It go effortlessly into the potatoes. It is ready. But the thing is, it doesn't pop. Okay, when you look like this, it's a bit bland. This is where the parsley and garlic toss happen. Only when you're ready to serve. So if you're not ready to serve now, I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna leave this on the side. When you're ready to serve, you're going to warm this up, medium to high heat, and this is only then we're going to add the bright green parsley, the garlic, final saute, and on the dish. We're going to start with, of course, the garlic, all in there, the parsley. You can be generous, it's up to you, it's going to bring some color, and this is the final saute. It's going to sizzle, it's going to make noise, it's going to smoke. And then on the dish. So here we are. This is the pomme de terre sautée landaise. They're just a variant of the classic duck fat potatoes with an addition of onions, mushrooms, and raw ham. Served with a, a side of green lettuce. They're always delicious. But let's face it, we did not reinvent the wheel for that side dish. What I want to talk about here, really, is the performance of that steel pan from Movio. It is a searing machine. That's what I would say. And I can see a great future for that pan in my kitchen. And I can't wait to try some other dishes and with meats and vegetables and see what we can do. But anyway, that completes the video for this week. I think next time on the next video, I'm going to uh, give you a little technique that I found, uh, which is a garlic mousse, a bit of an emulsify aioli that you can use as a little mousse you can toss through potatoes like this to have that taste of garlic with spices, with herbs or whatever. And it's super handy and I think it would be interesting for you to know it and try that. So I'll see you next time. Take care all. Bye-bye.